Hi guys, welcome to part 2 of my malaria video. I'll be covering diagnosis, treatments and preventions including chemoprophylaxis. As many of the symptoms of malaria are non-specific, the diagnosis of a patient that has recently returned from a malaria endemic area requires the use of diagnostic tests. The diagnostic tests are the light microscopy test and our rapid diagnostic tests. Our light microscopy test is the most sensitive and specific. It is therefore our diagnostic tool of choice. However, it has the drawback of needing a skilled worker to do this test, and even then it can create a false negative if the patient has been recently treated with a malaria treatment. Our rapid diagnostic test, this is great if there's no skilled worker available, as it just requires a blood sample via a fingerprint. It essentially works like a pregnancy test, um, the blood sample gets put on the on the test and then it detects if there's any of the plasmodium antigen in the blood. If studies have found that it is about 85 to 90 percent specific and sensitive. However, it is vulnerable to humidity and heat so it needs to be properly stored. Uh, even with this test, if you want the parasite count to help guide treatment, you'd need to go back to use the light microscopy test. So these are the two tests that you need to know about malaria. Okay, I'm first going to discuss the treatment of P. falciparum. So P. falciparum, if it's causing an uncomplicated malarial infection, we can treat it orally with the combination antimalarials of artemetha plus lumefantrine, which is our first line treatment. So the patient will take four tablets orally with food to help with the absorption at the 0, 8 hour, 24, 36, 48 and 60 hour mark. The patient will thereby be taking 24 tablets in total across 3 days. This will allow for at least the 90% eradication of P. falciparum. If this first line treatment is unavailable, we can go to the second line oral treatment of quinosulfate. Quinosulfate will be taken in conjunction with two antibiotics, doxycycline and clindamycin. So clunosulfate will be taken at 600 milligrams orally, done every 8 hours for 7 days. Plus doxycycline, 100 milligrams orally, 12 hourly for 7 days. Or if you're pregnant or a child, clindamycin for 300 milligram orally, 8 hourly for 7 days. Now if the patient has developed severe malaria, so they've got severe anemia, a high parasite count, high hypotension, hypoglycemic, they're constantly throwing up so they can't keep their food and medication down, we can treat them with the severe malaria regime. So that is an IV treatment of artesunate, 2.4 milligrams per kilogram. This will be done on admission and the 12 hour, 24 and then daily until our uncomplicated P. falciparum regime can be done. Now if this first line treatment can't be done, the quinine dihydrochloride can be administered IV as well. Now if this is administered too quickly, the patient may develop severe hypotension which can result in death. So a loading dose needs to be done. So the loading dose is 20 milligrams per kilogram done across 4 hours or 7 milligrams per kilogram done across 30 minutes which is then immediately changed to 10 milligrams per kilogram done over 4 hours. Now 4 hours after this loading dose has been done, the maintenance dose can be done. So the maintenance dose is 10 milligrams per kilogram done across 4 hours. This is done every 8 hours for until the oral uncomplicated P. falciparum regime can be tolerated. Okay, let's discuss the treatments of the different plasmodiums that can cause malaria. So, when we're treating malaria for that's been caused by P. vivax, P. malaria, and P. overlay, we can use chloroquine. Now, we don't use chloroquine anymore for P. falciparum because it's largely developed resistance to it, and P. vivax is starting to show resistance to it. So, the treatment that you use to treat to treat malaria is very important as we want to minimize resistance. So chloroquine. Initially, the patient will take four tablets, which equates to 620 milligrams. Then six hours later, they'll be reduced to two tablets, which is 310 milligrams, and that will be repeated on days two and three. 
Now if you watch my first video, you'll know that P. vivax and P. overlay, they can form hypnozytes in the liver and that's responsible for relapses that you may see in malaria. So we obviously want to treat that as well. So we can treat that with the primaquine and that is 15 to 30 milligrams daily with food to help with the absorption and that is done for 14 days. Now, care needs to be taken with some patients as patients with G6PD deficiencies, when they're taking Primaquine, they can get the adverse effects of hemolysis. Alright, let's discuss the things you can do to help the prevention of getting malaria from the female Anopheles mosquito. So, you can use insect repellent with at least 20% DEET, wear light long sleeve clothing, Use a bed net when sleeping that's been treated with insecticides, so such as the pyrethroid insecticide. Avoid mosquito infected areas from dusk to dawn, as that's when the female Anopheles mosquito typically feeds. And use indoor residue spraying of your home or wherever you're staying in a malaria infected area. So that's they're spraying the walls with insecticides such as the pyrethroid and DDT. So DDT is an insecticide that's gotten a lot of bad rep as of late because of the bad bioaccumulation effect that happens when it's leaked into the environment. So there is a lot of care that is being taken when they do spray your indoors to make sure that it doesn't get leaked into the environment so you don't get those bad effects with it. People that travel to a malaria endemic environment may decide to get chemoprophylaxis in order to help prevent them getting malaria from a mosquito bite. Now you need to take in mind that prophylaxis is only about 75 to 95 percent accurate so even while on it there's still a chance that you may get malaria from a mosquito bite. Now prophylaxis regimes they vary depending on the person and what country slash area they decide to visit. I will outline a few of the options with a few of the benefits of them. Now if you enter a chloroquine sensitive area this is a viable option however this needs to be taken one week before you enter the area for it to be effective. Uh, if you enter chloroquine resistance areas these are the other options that you have for treatment. Our first one is Atovaquine plus Progonil. This is another anti-malarial combination. I remember it as the P for Progonil being for prophylaxis. Now this is good as there's a child formulation so this is good for people that have children with them or if you're a child yourself. Uh, other options, Doxycycline. This is good at if you're a pregnant lady within your first 18 weeks of pregnancy as it's safe to use then. Uh, Mifluconil. This is good as it can be taken for up to one year so if you're expecting to be traveling in malaria endemic areas for a long time this would be a good one to take. And Primaquine is the most effective against P. vivax so if you're traveling to an area where P. vivax is the most prevalent that might be the best choice for you. That brings us to the end of my malaria videos. Check out the descriptions for further information on it. Thanks for watching.